gentlemen, live and direct from Country Underground in Charlotte, North Carolina, with truck stop number 12, Mr. Truck Stop himself, Gene Tracy. Yeah. Street, 300 Moorhead Street, East Moorhead. Good to be working with a great band like the Takers, Robert Maccabee. I was talking to Robert Maccabee, you know, he drives for overnight. I asked Robert, I said, Robert, how are you getting along? He said, man, I am pissed off. I am some kind of pissed off. I said, what do you mean you're pissed off? He said, well, I almost got a little last night and got a cramp in my arm. I had to quit. Robert's kind of funny turned that way. Oh, yeah. Heard about the truck driver named Billy Mills, Jr., truck driver down in Florida. Walked into a bar, he walked up to the girls, he says, say, say, is, is my Peter hanging out? She said, no, your Peter's not hanging out. He said, well, well it ought to be. I'm pissing. Oh, oh yeah. Heard about the truck driver named Paul Clark. Walked into a bar. Drunker in hell. Walked up to the bartender and he says, say, say, bartender, say, who did you vote for in the election? Bartender said, there's one subject I will not have discussed in this tavern, and that's politics. Also, bartender, what church you go to? Bartender said, there's one subject I will not have discussed in this tavern, and that's religion. Also, well, okay, Martin Thinner, is it okay if we talk about sex? Martin has said, well, certainly. Sex is always an open subject in a bar. Also, okay, fuck you. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Truckers know what to do. And I stopped one time, I was out in California driving north on 99, got just out of Bakersfield, at that uh, Holden Truck Center, they're on the freeway, I went in, they had an old broad, an old turkey, had been, been a waitress in there, I guess, 47 years, Betty Friesner, I believe was her name, at any rate, walked in, I said, hey, Betty, how are you? She said, oh, I'm mad as hell. I said, what are you mad at? She said, well, I just found out them birth control pills don't work for me. I said, what do you mean they don't work for you? She said, well, some bitches keep falling out. <laughs> She's a little slow. Nice girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Heard about the society matron. Walked into Bill's truck stop at I-40 and US 287 just out of Amarillo, Texas. She walked in and asked the waitress, said, pardon me, are your chickens fresh? The waitress said, well, of course they're fresh. She said, are you certain you, you have fresh chickens? The waitress said, I told you they're fresh. She said, well, tell the cook to bring me one. I want to see it. So the waitress went back in the kitchen and told the cook, said, some stupid old broad out here wants to see one of our goddamn chickens. <laughs> Wants to see if they're fresh. And the cook took the chicken out, handed it to the society matron. The society matron grabbed both legs, spread them apart, and smelled. <laughs> Truck driver for Carolina Freight sitting there said, God damn, lady, I don't believe you can pass that test. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I heard the other day. I heard the other day. Double Friday. Heard the other day about Betty Crocker buying out the Budweiser Brewing Company. They're going to bottle piss quick. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. What about the truck driver for ABF Truck Lines out of Fort Smith, Arkansas? Went in the bar. They told the bartender, he said, bartender, 
I'm going to sit here and drink Budweiser all day long. I ain't going to drink nothing but Budweiser. And I don't want nobody fucking with me. I don't want you to let anybody sit on my right. I don't want you to let anybody sit on my left. Don't bug me. Just run me a tab. I'll pay you after the, I drink all I want. Just every 15 minutes, set me up a fresh can of Budweiser. Keep my ashtray empty and don't fuck with me. He sat there from 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock that afternoon. Every 15 minutes, the bartender set him up a new can of Budweiser. That bartender went off duty. Another bartender came on duty. First bartender told the other and said, Every 15 minutes, give this guy a Budweiser. He won't drink anything but Budweiser. And keep his ashtray clean and don't fuck with him. Don't let anybody else fuck with him. And just run his tab, but keep an eye on him because something wrong with that son of a bitch. He's been drinking a fresh can of Budweiser every 15 minutes since 9 o'clock this morning. Here it is, 6 o'clock in the evening, and he hasn't gone to take a piss once. So all night long, the second bartender, every 15 minutes, set up a fresh can of Budweiser. Kept the guy's ashtray empty. Didn't fuck with him. Didn't let anybody else fuck with him. Two o'clock in the morning, every 15 minutes, he's drank another can of Bud. And this guy still hadn't took a piss all night long. And at two o'clock, the bartender walked up to him and said, Hey, buddy, we're going to close now. Here's your tab. Handed him his tab. He paid for all the Budweiser he drank, staggered out the door. The bartender came out and was just locking the door and happened to notice this truck driver from ABF standing there zipping down his pants at the curb. Bartender said, God damn, fella, you can't piss here. This ABF driver said, I ain't gonna piss here. I'm gonna piss way over there across the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Heard about the driver for Carolina Freight. Went into the bar, told the bartender, Give me Budweiser. Had about four Budweisers. Told the bartender, said, I'll be back in about 15 minutes. i got to go home and take a crap. Bartender said, well, you can use my restroom here. He said, no, I don't want to use your restroom. He said, I've been taking salts. <laughs> he said, well, that's all right. You can use my restroom. The guy said, well, if you think it's all right, and the Carolina driver went back in the bathroom about 15 minutes, this little bitch come out of the bathroom, and he was covered with shit from head to toe. The bartender went running back to the bathroom, and there was shit all over the walls, all over the ceiling, all over the seat. He came out and said, damn, fella, what kind of salt you been taking? The Carolina driver said, summer salt. for Roadway Express. we out working every day. The dock foreman would tell the guys at one o'clock in the afternoon, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave for a few hours. You guys go ahead and finish now. I'll probably be back by uh, six o'clock when shift time comes. But if I'm not, just go ahead on home. Never did come back. Every day he left at one o'clock, never did come back. After about three weeks, one of the dock workers said, that's so much ain't coming back this afternoon. Said, let's us just go ahead and knock off and go to the races or something. Other said, no, hell no, man. I'll lose my job. He said, oh, bullshit. Said, that guy ain't coming back. Said, let's just go on home. He said, well, all right, if we can go home, it'll be all right. But I sure don't want to go out the track or something where he might see me. So they went home, and then the second guy walked into his house. Didn't see his wife any place, sneaked upstairs, opened the bedroom door, and there was the dock foreman screwing his wife. So he closed the door, sneaked back out, sneaked downstairs, got in his car and drove back to the freight dock. 
Worked like a son bitch all afternoon. Six o'clock, he knocked off, went home. Came to work the next day. One o'clock, the foreman said, well, I'm going to take off. I'll probably be back by six o'clock. You guys go ahead and work. He no more got gone than the other guy said, hey, he said, that son of a bitch ain't coming back. He said, we done good yesterday. He said, we knocked off all afternoon. He said, let's do it again today. Second stock worker said, fuck you. I got damn near got caught yesterday, man. I ain't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heard out the truck driver for auto transport in Atlanta. Called the police station and said, Y'all better send the squad call over here. Said, There's a cat laying on a corner bleeding to death. Somebody have cut him to rid him. Dispatcher said, Yes, sir. And what is your location, sir? He said, I'm in a phone booth right here at Peachtree and sick him up. He said, I'm. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Could you repeat that address? He said, yes. So I'm right here at Peachtree and sick him up. He said, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm new at this job. Could you spell that last word? He said, yes, I believe it. Let's see. C-I-K-A-L-R-A. No, wait a minute. It's S-Y-C-J. The so hold on about ten minutes. I'm gonna drag this motherfucker down to Elm Street. Damn. Damn. Right. Yeah. What about the guy went in the Lucky Lady Lounge there by the windmill truck stop on I-20, just east of Wheeling, West Virginia. Went in, ordered a drink, went back in the bathroom. Just came tearing out of the men's room. Ran up the bartender, said, Damn, bartender. Said, I saw something I've never seen in my life before. Bartender said, What the hell's that? He said, You got two spades back there taking a leap, and one of them's Peter's white as a lily. <laughs> bartender said, Bullshit. He said, I mean it. Said, you got them two black dudes back there pissing, and one of them's Peter as white as a sheep. <laughs> About that time, the two guys come walking out of the men's room. The bartender said, hell, them ain't spades. Them's two Polish coal miners. One of them just got married day before yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Charlie to pay me no attention. All Charlie won't do talk about baseball. Charlie's so strung out on that baseball, he won't talk to me about screwing or nothing. Her friend said, well, why don't you go to the game and learn something about it? Said, go with him, do what he do. She said, I believe I will. Next day she went out to see the game with her boyfriends. Cardinals were playing. That was his team. Every time one of the Cardinals, he'd get a hit, he'd jump up and holler, Run, motherfucker, run! <laughs> she'd do the same thing he did. She'd jump up, holler, Run, motherfucker, run! I know! Batter from the other team would come up. He'd jump up, holler, Fan the motherfucker! She'd jump up, holler, Fan the motherfucker! About the middle of the fifth inning, she's getting caught up in the excitement of the game. One of the cards got a walk. He laid his bat down and he was strolling over to first. She jumped up, hollered, Run, motherfucker, run! Her boyfriend said, That boy ain't supposed to run. That boy got full ball. She said, Full ball. Strut, motherfucker, strut! Said, what are we going to do? Said, who's going to go tell his wife? The guy said, I ain't going to tell.
tell. Driving this big 18 gear Mack truck. 
And he was burning up that interstate. Tearing up that highway. Heading on. Moving out. Hauling ass. Shitting the dick. 55 miles an hour. Saw this hippie hitchhiking. Stopped and picked the hippie up. The hippie got in the tractor. The driver goes through all 18 years again. Very intensive driver. Looked straight ahead. For 10 minutes, nobody said a word. Finally, the hippie looked at the driver and said, Well, <laughs> said, I, I guess you're probably wondering whether I'm a boy or a girl. Popped all this long hair and everything. Truck driver said, It don't make no goddamn difference. I'm going to fuck you anyhow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Son of a bitch, I told you what you'd wind up with for five dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about the uh, driver for the hires trucking company there in Danville, Illinois? Lived in a trailer park and he went to see the doctor and he pulled his Peter out and it was skinned and scratched and bleeding and bruised. Torn to shreds. And the doctor said, what in the world happened to you? He said, well, he said, I live next door to this girl, bless her heart. She's way over sexed and her husband's overseas. And she wouldn't screw around on him for anything in the world. But she's so over sexed every night. I peek in her window, I watch. She gets in the kitchen and she gets a banana and peels it down. She has a hole in her kitchen floor. She sticks that banana in the hole. Gets up over that banana and works herself up and down. And I was watching last night and I just couldn't stand it anymore. And I crawled under the trailer. And when she stuck that banana in the hole, I pulled it on through and I came up in. She got up over me and was working herself up and down. Doctor said, well, I don't see how that turned your Peter into this shape. He said, but you don't understand. Just about the time I was going to get my rock, some son that rang her doorbell, she jumped up, tried to kick that banana up under the ice box. You know. <laughs> Heard about the driver for Jones Truck Lines out of Oklahoma City. What the hell was his name? Mickey Sherman, something like that. At any rate, he was going to get married, and he kept telling his bride, said, we're going to get married, and I'm going to tear that pussy up. I'm going to tear that pussy up. Hell yeah. On the wedding night, I'm going to tear that pussy up. And they got married, went into the motel room, and he started getting him a little. Oh, yeah. Mickey had a two-inch Peter. He said, I'm tearing that pussy. I'm just tearing that pussy. What I'm doing is tearing up that pussy. 
She reached up with her finger and started just tapping him on the forehead. He said, what the hell are you doing? She said, if you're tearing up my pussy, I'm beating your brains out. That's what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two truck drivers for KMW Trucking Company. They're in Fairbanks, Alaska. Met on the street. One of them had a chartreuse and purple plaid suit. The guy said, where in the hell did you get that atrocious suit? He said, let that goddamn wife of mine, stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> said, well, what's your wife got to do with your having that, that suit? He said, well, I told the son of a bitch to go down to Cox's and get me a seersucker suit. She went down to Sears and got me a cocksucker suit. <laughs> exactly from the Lightning Express line there in Zanesville, Ohio. Fell in love with this hillbilly girl from West Virginia. Stupid ass frog. Jones. Couldn't wipe her ass. But a beautiful girl. And he wanted to send her to a finishing school. So he shipped her off to Switzerland for six months. And after six months, she came back a completely changed woman. Her manners were polished to perfection. She got off the airplane. Her hair was beautifully coiffed. She had impeccable taste in her clothes. Got off the airplane. She went running up to her lover. She said, oh, oh, my darling, I've missed you. I've missed you so much. Have you been blue since I've been gone? He said, God damn it, the word is blown. Get your stupid ass back on that airplane and get back to Switzerland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I about the truck driver wanted to buy a farm. I was going to the newspaper. Found an ad in the newspaper. For sale, 200 acres, prime bottom land, running 96 head, registered black Angus cattle, tractor, harrow, disc, other farm implements included, brand new barn, two-story, six-bedroom home, for sale to the right man, $1,000. Damn. Went out to the farm and saw the farmer sitting on the porch, rocking back and forth. Walked up and said, I noticed this ad in the paper. The farmer said, yes, sir, I fair is right. He said, well, how in the hell can you afford to sell this kind of a farm for $1,000? The farmer said, well, let's see if you qualify. I said, are you married? I said, no, sir, I'm not. He said, well, you can qualify. Because, you see, there is one stipulation to get the farm for a thousand dollars, you'd have to marry my daughter, Helen Patricia. He said, "My God!" He said, "She's got to be some kind of ugly. You'd let go of this farm for a thousand dollars just to get somebody to marry you." He said, "Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. Said she is right ugly, and she's a little bit dippy." <laughs> Guy said, "Well, could I take a look at her?" He said, "Why, well, sure." Turned around, hollered into the house, said, "Helen Patricia!" Helen Patricia, come out here and see this man. She come running out of the house, hollering, see the man, see the man, see the man. I said, God damn, she is bad off. I said, let, let, let me ask you. I said, uh, I, I can't let a deal like this get past. I said, could we talk about this in private? He said, well, of course. I said, Helen Patricia. Go in and get this man a cup of coffee. She went running off. Get the coffee. Get the coffee. Get the coffee. <laughs> he said, well, man, I can't let this deal pass. So we're going to have to go through with it. I, I'll have to put a sack over her head while I fuck her or something. But I... So they worked out a deal. About a month later, the guy's down working on the barn. Hollers up the house to his wife. Said, Helen Patricia. Said, bring me my hammer down here. She said, get the hammer, get the hammer, get the hammer. 
said, Helen Patrice, bring me that new sack of nails. He said, get the nails, get the nails, get the nails. He was up on the ladder driving a nail with his hammer. He hit his thumb. He went, oh, fuck. She said, get the sack, get the sack, get the sack. 